Lads, welcome back to Fusion YGO. The other day we got some really good news. Some really, really, really cool good news. And that would be that the greatest archetype in Yu-Gi-Oh's history got two, count them, two very powerful, very good cards. I have my phone handy so that I'm able to look up and make sure I read the effects verbatim because I don't have the physical cards. Uh, we're going to go over to those cards. We're going to talk about their potential applications in Orcus and why I think these two cards completely change Orcus in the best way possible and in a way I never could have possibly predicted in a hundred years. I'm very excited to talk about it, so why don't we go ahead and dive right in to this analysis and breakdown of two brand new cards. But before we do that, make sure you like this video if you haven't already, because if you want more Orcus content on the channel, because I am the Orcus guy and uh, it's kind of my thing. Also, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We do some really cool Yu-Gi-Oh stuff and we have some really cool series that we're working on in the background for you guys. So look forward to and hang tight for that. Finally, if you have not joined our Discord, please do so. That Discord link is in the description and it's a super fun community. So come on in, check it out, come hang out with me, Christian, Lucas, and all the others that are a part of the Fusion YGO Hangout Crew. All right, and without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the descriptions of and card effects of these brand new Orcus cards. Starting off with the brand new Link 1 monster, Galatea I, the Orcus Automaton. It is a machine Link 1 monster with an effect with a summoning condition of one Orcus or World Legacy monster. Its effects are as follows. You can only link summon Galatea I, the Orcus Automaton, once per turn. It cannot be used for an Xyz summon. You can send one card from your hand to the graveyard to add a World Legacy monster or orchestrated babble from your deck or graveyard to your hand. If this card is in your graveyard, you can banish one other Orcus card from your graveyard to special summon this card. Uh, you can only use each effect of Galatea I, the Orcus Automaton, once per turn. That card's really, really strong. We're going to talk about why it's so good in a minute. Let's go ahead and read the other Link monster. In Lil Girsu, the Orcus Mech Knight. It's a Link 4 with 2,600 attack. It requires two plus monsters, including an Orcus Link monster. You can target one of your banished Orcus or World Legacy cards, add it to your hand, then you can shuffle one card from your hand into the deck and take control of one face-up monster your opponent controls. That is a non-targeting change of heart that is permanent. Crazy. During your main phase, if this card is in your graveyard because it was sent there from the extra monster zone this turn, you can banish it, send one card on the field to the graveyard. You can only use each effect of Enlil Girsu, the Orcus Mech Knight, once per turn. So it's a hard once per turn. You can use both effects of both of these monsters. But why are they so crazy? So let's start with Galatea Eye. One, Girsu is now the best card in the archetype. It's no longer my boy Harpoor who is freed from sins that he did not commit. It is now Girsu. And the reason for that is because Girsu gives you a token on top of it, and it becomes a one-card Galatea. This full combo is insane if you have a single other Orcus name in your hand. If you have Girsu Nightmare or Girsu Harp, your turn is insanely high ceiling because you're able to get the entire Orcus package in your graveyard very efficiently. And it's super consistent and super easy. So what this means is that Girsu on Summon will give your opponent and you a token. Now you no longer worry about infinite and permanence. Cool. The next thing that happens is you use that token, you summon Galatea I. Awesome. Now you pitch that other Orcus name that's in your hand, and you are able to get Babel directly from the deck. That's great because that means that Galatea is opened up to search other cards. The Girsu, whatever it dumps, it's prop. Let's assume you had Nightmare in hand, so you're dumping Harp. Cool. Now you link those two away, you make Galatea Prime. What you can do here is you can go Harp, Summon, Symbol Skeleton, Nightmare, Dump, World Wand, World Wand, Summon back Harp, 
Now you've got two level fours on the field, or a level four and a level three, whatever, and you've got these two on the field with Galatea proper, you're able to then banish your gear suit to summon Galatea I. Well, what does that mean? You can summon Enlil Gearsu if you want to at this point. You can also go Galatea, put the World Wand back. You can set a Crescendo, which is, again, crazy. But the coolest part here is that Enlil Gearsu being a steal with a Crescendo backing it up is crazy. And if you're going second, you set Return, because you can just use Return, send it to the graveyard, and then you get to just send, it to the, send a card on their field to the graveyard. You get a lot of recursion with these, and it's very inherent. Because everything I just said just gets you to Galatea. Proper. The current best card in the archetype. You can get to it off of one card. With a bunch of interruption. A bunch of interaction. And you're able to play a bigger hand trap package if you want to. You can play more board breakers if you want to. You can play whatever you want in it. And it's super strong because if you're playing, like let's say, the Horus package. Which is currently the best way to play it. You can play the Horuses and the Bice Deals and you're not in any kind of negative situation. It allows you to play things like Chaos Angel in the deck or other Synchro Monsters because Brass Bombard is a level 1 tuner. That level 1 tuner opens up a lot of avenues for the deck. For example, Bombard plus Nightmare is a level 8. Or you can go a level 5 with Gearsu or Harpoor plus Bombard. There's a lot of free Synchro plays that the deck hasn't even ever explored because it wasn't consistent enough but now it is. And that's crazy. And Enlil Girsu and Galatea I actually open up plays, not just for Long Girsu, who is already a very powerful card in his own right, and it doesn't really help with Ding Girsu because Ding Girsu is still busted. But what it does help is the boss monster, the true boss monster, of the Orcist archetype, because you're getting more banished cards, or Custrian becomes a very playable, very powerful and board piece because it requires three dark machine three machines in the banished pile well it's really hard to get that for that negate not anymore you get to put a gear suit back you get to put a symbol skeleton back and a world wand or a nightmare or a harpoor back plus you have babble live the whole, whole time it's so easy to get to and with things like ip mascarena being able to make it it because or custody needs the protection i guess I don't know. Like, it's an insane, an insane deck. Orcist has become, with these two cards, when we get them in the TCG, I think it's going to be a competitive deck. And because it's a bunch of dark, it's going to have some play. It's going to see some kind of success. It, these two cards are so good. I'm, I'm so, so happy with how they came out. The change of heart, non-targeting effect is very good. Clearly, uh, because with, I didn't even get into that effect. So you get to add a card from your banished pile to your hand, put a card from your hand into your deck so you could just re-add the gear suit that you dumped. Oh no, you can go loop-de-loop -loop with gear suit? That's really cool. So in your standard line of play, you can go, okay, well I'm going to steal your monster as a quick effect and I get to add my starter back for next turn. That sounds fair. Like... That's crazy. This deck is insane now. Enlil Girsu opens the deck up to a whole new world of possibilities, and Galatea I sets the whole deck at a whole new pace, allowing it to compete with the current decks. And that, to me, says Konami, they like me. They really like me. But guys, lads, that's what I wanted to say, is just talk about my favorite archetype, getting two really awesome cards. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you leave that like. Like I said at the beginning, I got nothing else to add. If you have any questions about how Orcus is going to look in the future, hit the Discord and let me know. And until next time, lads, as always, good fun. Have luck.